Synthetic division is a really easy way to divide polynomials by linear expressions. Those are expressions of the form x minus k, though don't be fooled, something like x plus 2 would also apply because, of course, that's the same as x minus negative 2. So x plus or minus a thing, if we're dividing by something like that, we can use synthetic division. Let's talk about how to do it. We'll walk through a couple examples beginning with this one, x to the 4 minus 10x squared minus 2x plus 4 divided by this linear expression x plus 3. So synthetic division does apply here because we're dividing a polynomial by a linear expression. Synthetic division is not for dividing by anything else, like x squared, x squared plus 2, x cubed minus x, anything like that. That's not going to work. It's only for dividing polynomials by linear expressions. So we'll figure out what this equals. Just make sure we're on the same page here. This could also be written as our polynomial in the numerator divided by x plus 3. Fractions, of course, are just another way to write division. Let's get into the solution. To do synthetic division, we begin with this sort of rectangular frame that's two rows tall. In the top row, we put the coefficients of our dividend. That's the numerator, the thing that we're dividing by something. The coefficients of this polynomial are 1, because 1x to the fourth, Notice we have a zero because we have zero x cubes. That's a thing that's easy to miss. Then we have minus 10 x squareds, then minus 2 x, and then our constant of 4. So again, in the top row, we put the coefficients of the numerator, the coefficients of the dividend. You start at the highest degree, and if there's a power that doesn't appear in your polynomial, make sure you represent that with a coefficient of zero when you're setting up the synthetic division. Out to the left is where we write our k value. Remember, this is a method for dividing by expressions of the form x minus k. So what has to go here is k, the thing that we're subtracting from x in the divisor. Now, if we're dividing by x plus 3, what are we subtracting from x? The answer is negative 3. Of course, we could rewrite x plus 3 as x minus negative 3. So negative 3 is the k here. If we were dividing by x minus 2, the k would be 2. If we were dividing by x minus 4, the k would be 4. If we were dividing by x plus 1, the k would be negative 1, and so on. All right, now here's how it works. Take your first coefficient and just bring it down and write it below the bar. So there's 1. Then we hit it with this factor of k. Multiply it by negative 3 and put it up here. So there's our negative 3. Then just add these two numbers and put that sum down below the bar. Then hit that with this factor of negative 3 and write it up there. So negative 3 times negative 3, which is positive 9. Then add those two numbers and write it below the bar. Negative 10 plus 9 is negative 1. We continue in this pattern, right? So we did the addition. Then we would multiply by negative 3 and write it up there. Then we would add, and then we would multiply by negative 3, write it up there. That's all there is to it. So finishing these steps, remember, negative 1 needs to be hit by our k. Negative 1 times negative 3 is positive 3, and we'll put that in the next column. So positive 3, then we add these two numbers together. Negative 2 plus 3 is positive 1. And then again, we hit that with a factor of negative 3 and write it up in the next column. That's negative 3, and 4 plus negative 3 is positive 1. We're done the synthetic division, so now the only question that remains is how do we get our answer from this information? What you have to remember is that the last number in synthetic division is the remainder. That's our r. We have a remainder of 1. The rest of the numbers, going from right to left, are the coefficients of x with the power increasing by 1 at each step, beginning with the coefficient of x to the 0, then the coefficient of x to the 1, then the coefficient of x to the 2, and finally the coefficient of x to the 3. Recall when we set this up, the coefficients in the top row corresponded to x to the 4, then x to the 3, x squared, x to the 1, and the constant term, which is x to the 0. So by dividing by a linear factor, we've sort of shifted this by 
by one. This first column used to correspond to x to the four, but now that we've divided by a linear factor, it corresponds to x to the three, and so on. So what's the result of this division? Well, based on our synthetic division, it's one x to the three minus three x squared minus, because it's a negative three, minus x to the one, and then plus that constant of one, and then our remainder. The remainder, remember, still needs to get divided by x plus three. So the remainder is one divided by x plus three. That's how you do synthetic division. This little box here from Larson's calculus shows you the general pattern of synthetic division for a cubic polynomial. I find it a little bit hard to follow, but here it is in case you find it useful. See what the box is saying. The vertical arrows were where we were adding terms. We added and wrote below the line. Add the sum, put it below the line. Add below the line and so on. And the diagonal arrows are indicating where we would multiply by k. Multiply by k and write it up there. Multiply by k and write it up in the next column, and so on. Here's another problem. A polynomial divided by a linear factor. What's our k value that we want to put out here? Well, the k is what we're subtracting from x in the divisor. The divisor is x minus 5, so we're subtracting 5 from x. So it's positive 5 that goes out there. If instead we were dividing by x plus 5, then really that would mean that we're subtracting negative 5, and then we would have a negative 5 out here. But in this case, that's not the situation, so let's proceed. In the top row, we put the coefficients of our polynomial, 3x cubed, negative 17x squared, 15 x and a constant of negative 25. Now we just begin with this down and up and down and up pattern. So three just gets written right down here, there's three, and then we multiply it by our k and write it in the next column. Five times three is 15. Add these two numbers, that's gonna give us negative two. Then multiply by the k and write it in the next column. Five times negative two is negative 10. Add these two numbers, that gives us positive five. Multiply by k and write it in the next column. Five times five is 25. These two numbers add to zero. So what is the result of this division? Well, remember, the remainder is zero, and then five is the coefficient of x to the zero, negative two is the coefficient of x to the one, and three is the coefficient of x squared. So the result of the division is three x squared minus two x, plus five. X to the zero, of course, is just one, so this is the constant term, and we have no remainder. The remainder of zero is particularly interesting because that means this polynomial is actually divisible by x minus five. That means x minus five is a factor of the polynomial, and five, then, is actually a root of the polynomial. It's a place where the polynomial hits zero. You can see what I mean. Here's the polynomial, and since we saw that dividing it by x minus five produced a remainder of zero, we know that we can take an x minus five out of it, and what that leaves is three x squared minus two x plus five, and we can factor that into 3x minus 5 times x plus 1. And so then we can use this to fully factor the polynomial. We could then apply the zero product property and find all the roots, one of which would be x equals 5. So synthetic division can be a useful way to test zeros. You can see from this factorization that negative 1 would be another root of the polynomial because of this factor of x plus 1. So if we tried to divide by x plus 1, we would again get a remainder of zero. You can give that a try on your own, divide this polynomial by x plus one, and you should get zero, because as we can see here, x plus one is a factor of the polynomial. Give that a try, and now here's one more example. Use synthetic division to divide x cubed plus 512, by x plus eight. Remember to put zeros for the coefficients of the terms that don't appear in the numerator. All right, I'm gonna put the answer on screen now. And there it is, the coefficients are one x cubed, zero x squared, zero x, a constant of 512. Negative eight is out here because we're subtracting negative eight from x in the divisor. Once you go through the usual process, we end up getting an answer of one x squared minus eight x plus 16.5.
64 with a remainder of 0, which means x plus a is actually a factor of the polynomial in the numerator. We can factor x cubed plus 512 into x plus 8 times x squared minus 8x plus 64, although we can't factor this quadratic any further. So that's synthetic division. It's pretty smooth once you get in the rhythm. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and check the description for links to other pre-calculus lessons. Thanks for watching.